Welcome to Florida's Paradise Coast, home to some of the most beautiful beaches in the world in Naples. And it is also home to the Minto US Open Pickleball Championships powered by Margaritaville. And we are excited today to be inside one of the most unique open air arenas in the world, Zing Zang Championship Court. You can see already the crowds are gathering and some pickleball action is underway. We are here in the booth with an amazing view of the courts. I'm Rusty from Pickleball Channel once again and today I'm joined with Tim Buick. Tim, say hi to the folks. Oh, I'll tell you, I am so stoked to be here. It's the largest pickleball party in the world. There's no place I would rather be than right here. And whether you are a competitor or whether you are a spectator, there's amazing things ha happening here. Again, the U.S. Open is setting records. The number of participants continues to go up, and I don't know how it keeps getting bigger and better. The countries, 21 countries this year, 50 states, literally every state is covered, and internationally we have people coming. Oldest 8, 88, youngest 9, and we are going to see some fun stuff here today. It's this unique bracket, right? The pro split age bracket where you have an over 50 and an under 50. And yesterday there were some amazing things happening. We had some upsets. In particular, in women's, we had some strong, strong teams. Beth Bellamy and Paris Todd were favored, but coming in, newcomers, Quarter and Humberg, they had a fight, fight, fight. You can see their game number one, and at the end, they went to three games and they pulled it out. They were so excited. It was amazing, Tim. Oh, the passion is fantastic, and 11-9 in the third, you can't ask for anything more. Expect the unexpected here at the U.S. Open Pickleball Championship. And then in the men, you had some more great matches happening there. Weinbach and Diascu, you can see 11-9, 11-5, lots of back and forth action. And with these people, lots of fist pumps and, and chest pumps as well. You can see there, another victory moment all the way up in the air. So what did you think about some of that men's interchange? Oh, it was just fantastic. One word comes to mind over and over as I watch that match, passion. It was overflowing in that match, and I expect more here this afternoon. So there you have another look at your men's and women's champions. But get ready for some more amazing action from Zing Zang Championship Court at the Mento U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, powered by Margaritaville. Margaritaville, it's not just a state of mind. Now, it's a place to live. Introducing Latitude Margaritaville. New homes in 55 and better communities where you can live the Margaritaville lifestyle every day. Find your new home at LatitudeMargaritaville.com. With a beautiful look of Zing Zang Championship Court, we are coming into a game already in process. You can see they're walking across the court a little bit. Close to you, that was Mircha Marariu and, and the red and white. That was, Mila, there you go, Milan Rain, and they are in game number two here in a quarterfinal. Mircha Marario there about to serve with a look at Eva Welsher and Kyle Yates. Game number one was 11-13, so we anticipate some more great action here, game number two. This has been an extremely tight match. The, in the first set, there was 13-11 in favor of Rain and Moriario. Is they were trailing the entire game till the end and came back and uh, with with Yates uh, pulling it out there with a, a winner at, to close out game one and now it's tight once again here in game two. Yates running across the entire court there. We had talked about how fascinating it is in this division with the mixed pro split age. And you're really seeing it with uh, Yates and his partner, Welsher, is that Yates has a tendency to take over the entire court. And what they, the opponents, have been doing very well with Rain and uh, Moriaryu is. Uh, They've been going behind him a lot and scoring points off that. Scoring. 
Here we got a point coming to Rain Morario. And as we sort of said before, uh, many of these players have been here before. They played against each other. All four of them are from South Florida. Uh, Morario and Rain in uh, Boca, I believe, and Yates in Fort Myers. And Welsher, this is her home right across the wall here in the Minto development. here looking for an opening. Well, she's a little frustrated with herself. You know, a, a veteran herself, a med gold medalist here at the championships, one of the top senior pros. So I imagine that soft game there a little frustrating. Typically, she can go for days with that. What we've seen early is Rain is playing like a veteran. She's the youngest player on the court at 25 years old, but she has been incredibly steady from the very first point. You can see the frustration is Mircea Morario. But again, this looking somewhat similar development to game number one with a three point lead. Yates serves. Yates and Welsher are going to have to come from behind again if they want to avoid going to a third game. Drew, look at that. 8 5. Sketcher's instant replay there is. Mutra Morario puts it away. Well, that worked in his favor, coming across. That's the aggressiveness we've seen from Yates, perfect anticipation. Six, eight, two. Hmm. That time it didn't necessarily work. Eight, six, one. Here they are serving again at eight six one. Attempt at that lob. Mircha's athleticism getting up in the air, rejecting that. Let's take a look at that sketches replay. Yeah, he likes to sky. He very difficult to lob over his head. Nine, six, one. Oh, another great get, another. A Whoa. fantastic point. That's a good lesson, you're never out of it. They were in perfect defensive position to stay in the point. Two points from evening the match. Good duck there by Kyle Yates to let that ball go long, bringing the side out and the serve back to their side. That was one of the rare times where Rain was just a touch impatient there. I think it was sensing victory here in the second game and maybe sped it up just a touch too early. Well, she looks to let that go out and just lands on the baseline. What do they say? The middle solves the riddle, right? It well, certainly did on that point. Welsher wide. All four players involved. Mm. Yeah, you hear that yell from Welsher. Oh, that's frustrated with that moment. Say of all the shots, don't want to miss that one. 
Four attack balls in a row by Yates and then tries the lob, which was just a hair long. Otherwise, it would have been perfect. Nine, seven, one. The serve comes back to Morario. Serves to Yates. Nice drop. Working well, sure, again. And that's where Yates anticipated beautifully. They've been stuck two points from victory in game two for a while now. Rain to serve. Morario comes across. Doesn't quite get on it. Let's take a look at that sketcher's pick a ball replay. <laughs> a celebration there by Welsher. But it's nice, we're, you know, we're not a little bit, they seem to be going after uh, Rain and Welsher, but all four players are getting into the mix. So here she goes cross court to Yates. And that changed the dynamic a little bit where you had the ladies on one side of the court and the men on the other, which changes that cross court dynamic. Now we're at a one point game. Yates with that lob again. Another lob. They Rain have able to handle it again. Yeah, they have been lobbing Rain pretty consistently, and she's consistently been up to the task. Mm. Hits the net, doesn't quite get over. And that side out takes us back. Once again, they're Rain. seeing if they can get off nine. Rain stood her ground. That's a good lesson of saying a lot of times we bail out from the line. She stuck right in there, even though she knew Yates was coming right after her. Point. Okay, so now we're finding ourselves the game point, the Skechers replay here. Morario goes after Welsher. And we'll see if they can close it out and take us to three games. Yeah. Serving to even the match. Second it's Brain's turn. Now another opportunity. Mm. Yeah. Unfortunately, the back and forth, we have a side out. So game number one, similar position, ultimately went to 13. Welsher game Yates game with only two points away. Hoping that they can close this out. Ooh, wrong server was just called. If you didn't hear the referee there, so wrong server. That is a costly mistake at this stage. So eight, ten, two. Yeah. So as. These players are both stacking. They're, they're switching the side in order to position themselves for strategy, but sometimes it's easy to get mixed up. And now we have another game point. Hmm. Again, Rain held her ground. That one just went, just went wide. You know, even with the pros, obviously they have hit thousands and thousands of balls, but even them can get out of order a little bit with uh, Miss Server. Mm, good dig. Yeah. Mm. 
the two relative youngsters going at it as Yates is 28, Rain is 25. Yates wins that battle. Yes. And now Welsh serves. Hey, Tim, one. Mm. Yeah, Welsher's got her hands on her head there. You can see that frustration as Rain looks on. Maybe breathing a little bit of a sigh of relief. Yeah. Oh, there's that aggressiveness. Yates is one of the very best in the game and being aggressive and just taking over the point. You there see it is right there. there. Just dominated. He put them on their heels quickly, and now it's suddenly a one-point game. So they've been holding this 8-10 multiple times. And a missed return there. So they're looking to pump up the crowd a little bit, and uh, as they're now <laughs> close, we have a timeout call. We will take a Takea hydration break and be back in a moment. The Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, powered by Margaritaville, are brought to you by Latitude Margaritaville and Minto. Change your latitude to the active adult paradise of Latitude Margaritaville. By Naples, Marco Island, and the Everglades, Florida's paradise coast. By Skechers Pickleball. Experience performance comfort on the court with the all-new Skechers Viper Court Pro. And by Margaritaville Hotels and Resorts. Check in and chill out at margaritavilleresorts.com. Now we're coming back from our timeout here. As you see another shot of Zing Zang Championship Court. There in the corner is Eva Welsher, who was able to join us actually yesterday. Uh, she did a fantastic job here in the booth looking at the mixed, I mean, excuse me, at the men's and women's. Kyle Yates, her partner. Again, they know each other quite well, both being here uh, from South Florida, one from Naples, one from Fort Myers. And Yates, if you're new to pickleball and to the US Open, has been a champion multiple times here. In fact, the very first year in 2016, Kyle played a significant role in encouraging uh, the sport and encouraging this event to take place, communicating and partnering with Chris Yvonne and Terry Graham, talking with Collier County and bringing this amazing event to fruition. And we find ourselves tied up at 10-10 as Yates and Welsher, two points away from closing the game. Hmm. So on this occasion, that timeout ended it in a favor coming back to Rain Morario. Oh, that net cord, mm. just a hair short. Mm. And Rain and Moriaryu is, they've been stuck at 10 points for a while, now the second server. Wow, that's an important side out. Ten, ten, one. Score is called, 10-10. Drop all four at the net. Mm. They did a brilliant job working that point. Yates and Welsher. And here's a look. You see the finish there, but in that point, they twice lobbed rain to her offhand side. Very difficult high backhand. And now we have a match point. And a lob winner. They've been doing it all match and rally twice trailing significantly in both the first and second game, but end up winning it 13-11, 12-10. You can see here that victory moment with Yates and Welsher. 
the crowd letting out whistles and cheers and uh, each of them pointing to each other saying how important they were. Uh, and here's the win look from the Skechers Pickleball Replay. Oh, just a little miss. She'd been good all day long catching those. Just perfect. But in this moment, it's a victory. We'll be back with more championship action on the Zing Zang Championship Court at the Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships powered by Margaritaville. Margaritaville, it's not just a state of mind. Now, it's a place to live. Introducing Latitude Margaritaville. New homes in 55 and better communities where you can live the Margaritaville lifestyle every day. Find your new home at LatitudeMargaritaville.com. And as we come back, you can see all the work that goes into this. These unique speakers up in this unique shade structure here. And Zing Zang Championship Court as we come down to reveal all the things that go into making this a special place. The stands come in. They're not normally here, obviously. And you actually have five courts in this space. But right now, they've taken the other four courts out. And as you can see, this pro split age mixed group warming up. You have Jamie Ownsteins there, who's going to be the senior player, who's going to be partnering uh, with Simone Jardine, who is well known here at the U.S. Open. Yesterday we saw her competing, and as you can see, medal after medal after medal. You know, she first came here, and actually, there's even more medals than that. We didn't have room necessarily on the card. So, a great ambassador of the sport, as well as player. Uh, Suzanne Barr over there is in the red and the black, and uh, she has not been here on championship court as much. Right? She's playing with Paddle Tech, and it's exciting to see her. Her doubles partner later in the year, she's going to be playing with Shelby Bates. But right now in the split age, she has a strong veteran, Dave Weinbach, who you can see there. And so these mix-ups uh, or these mixed matches are unique in that you often see totally different pairings than you normally would. Yeah, and you've got, it, it, this is a fascinating uh, pairing right here in match because you have two genuine legends of the sport in the Badger, Dave Weinbach, and you have Simone Jardine, who's the only two-time Triple Crown winner at the U.S. Open. And, and, and so then you've got two that especially, the, the one that's really going to be fascinating to watch is Jamie Onsis. He's 53 years old. He's a native of Sao Paulo, Brazil. He's in Clearwater, Florida now. And his history, he's new to the sport. He played his first pro tournament last year. He's a high level. He, he, he rose in tennis. He has wins over Yvonne Lendl and Michael Chang. So we're talking serious tennis skills. He rose to as high as number 34 in singles and number 21 in doubles in the world in tennis. And now he's made the switch, as so many people have, to pickleball. He's a real threat. Yeah, and as you can see, again, all four players warming up. Um, the, uh, the uniqueness of the game, uh, I think we've said before, uh, the different strategy, the different builds. Uh, but we'll be back as the game begins, as we take a moment to recognize our amazing sponsors. The Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, powered by Margaritaville, are brought to you by Paddle Tech, the official paddle of the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, by Southern Tide, the premium coastal lifestyle brand, by Takeya, hydration is an all-day game, and by the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships. Save the date, April 13th to 20th, 2024. So yes, the U.S. Open's coming once again in 2024. We hope to see you there. And uh, for those of you who are coming from out of town, uh, people come here specifically just to watch. Uh, we met some fans, again, who we've known for several years. It's kind of fun to see them in the stands, and they'll travel across the country just to see some amazing gameplay here on Zing Zang Championship Court, in addition to the, the expos and the vendors and, and the overall community. 
and there's over 3,000 participants in the tournament. Those are just the players. And then you think of everyone who surrounds the players and the people from the community that come here. There is a reason why they call this the biggest pickleball party in the world, and it is. It's a perfect blend of competition, community, and camaraderie. Yeah, and as you see there, Jardine uh, and the players typically, they're testing the balls, and in the heat sometimes the balls can get a little warped, so when you kind of see them popping them up, they're typically seeing, is it round, is it wobbling, does it look like a good, legit ball, so to speak? And speaking of the ball, once again, we have Franklin uh, with the X40 ball, the official ball of the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, and uh, they've done that for several years since 2017, so thanks to Franklin for supporting. And we are about to begin game number one as Jarjean serves to bar. This is going to be a battle. A lot of passion. This will be some high level play. Quick little hand battle between the two gentlemen. Jardim goes right after the Badger and wins that battle. And they're up to a quick 2-0 lead. Oh, nice as she runs up to the net. Jardim with that transition zone takes it out of the air. Makes it look so good and easy, but difficult to pull off. Such a natural. You can see her frustration right there. She jumps up in the air. She knew that didn't quite go off right. A little uncharacteristic. Bar serves to Onsins. Second serve. Zero, three, two. Side-out volley. That was so sweet, going the opposite way on the forehand side, but actually took it off his backhand wing. Yeah, super quick. Explain here. Take a look here, that Skechers incident. Oh, there's a moment kind of coming back, seeing them. Yeah, inside-out. You're victory. kind of coming from, from inside and then moving it to the outside of your body. Don't see comes across. The height, clearly the, the tallest person in, in pickleball in particular, since you have that non volley zone, the length of the reach is a, a nice advantage. He is so dangerous. I got to watch him a little bit earlier today. And well, when he gets the line, he just takes up so much space that oh. one off the net cord. Good reaction by on scenes there, ducking, letting the ball go long. That's so difficult to do, Toke. Dude, try to lay off that. You know, and how many out balls do we hit? And they have such good eyes. So at 5-0 with a quick lead. Weinbach with a the lob there. Simone Georgine returns it, ends up going in their favor. And we're real quick at 6-0. I wonder if there's a timeout coming. That was so beautifully played. There's, she's put together, Jarjim has put together a couple of beautiful points. And here's a look. Mm, right on the baseline. And just rolls it right inside. Right out. Our catches are in the transition there a little bit. And here's their chance, first time to see if they can get off that zero. Yeah, quick into the body. Not much you can do there. You really can't. It, it's hit so hard to try to even get away from that, especially for a big guy. That's a large target. 
Just a touch high on the dink from Barr. Jardine took advantage of it, drilled it down the middle. One, seven, two. And here we are at 172 as Weinbach serves to own scenes. Well played by Barr. And here's a look at the Skechers Pickleball instant replay. Yeah, right down the middle there. It's a great illustration. Placement's more important than power. Hmm. Ball didn't come up for Weinbach. Yeah, we were talking earlier, you know, I'm not sure that the, the courts have been resurfaced and new paint, and every once in a while it looks like if it hits that new paint just perfectly, it skids a little. Hmm. Unseens can't quite get it. Over the net there, moving to second server with a five point lead early in game number one. No timeouts have been called if you're just joining us. Oh, Weinbach tries to do the big overhead. Those are the kind of shots you hit where you lie in bed at night and go, how did I miss that? You know, he'll make that 99 out of 100 times. That was set up well by Barr. Beautiful soft volley right on the sideline. Here's that look. And then drilled the winner right there. Went right to the body. The bar just served to Jardim. An uncharacteristic return into the net, putting them at 3-8. Moving to second serve, Weinbach to Yarjean. Goes to heat it up direct at Weinbach, but he's there with that quick return. I anticipated that beautifully. so impressive is they're so still. They're calm, quick, and compact. Bar was equal to the task there. It seems went right after her. So we've gone from 7-0, or 0-7 technically, and now they're three points away from tying it up. And we had talked about you would think that would be an ideal time to call a timeout, but they gather themselves, will save the timeout, and they've righted the ship. A little pop on the net. Oh! Okay. Weinbach with a... He isn't shy, he, is he? He is not, with a come on. <laughs> and take a look at that. Comes down. Right across. A really nice deep return. It's amazing how much pressure you can put on your opponent by just getting the ball deep. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. They held him at. Yeah, there's that long reach at work. Yeah, yeah. They knew they were in trouble on scenes. Was leaning over into the kitchen. Ooh. You want that back? Mm. Serve goes out and coming back to Simone Jardim serve to Dave Weinbach. Mm. And I'm impressed with that because it was not a hard shot at all. It was perfectly placed. And here it she is. She slides over and boom, just pops it in the opening. Now the point started. Hmm. Yeah, she's 
the beginning of that went to the same place, right? She went down the middle there, almost the same shot. This time, Simone Jardim got it, but ultimately, Barr then put it away. Weinbach went right at Jardim. She's laughing. He's pointing right at her. Come on, let's go. Oh, nice, nice touch, right? Oh, soft hands. And here it is. Just a beautiful drop. Saw the opening. Bar stayed back. Oh, looks like on scenes ducked a little bit. Thought maybe that was going out. Landed just deep in the back court. Bar smiling. I think she was pleased with that shot. And so here we do have. After giving, being stuck on eight for so long as it turns into a one-point game, a timeout is called. So we will take a Takea hydration break and see how the rest of this match unfolds. The Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, powered by Margaritaville, are brought to you by Paddletech, the official paddle of the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, by Southern Tide, the premium coastal lifestyle brand, by Takea, Hydration is an all-day game. And by the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships. Save the date, April 13th to 20th, 2024. All right, thank you. Here we are back on Zing Zang Championship Court. As we continue in game number one, where Bar Weinbach have climbed back, turning it into a one point game. So they were literally at 7 0. Now we're tied up at 8 8. You know, uh, after this, after this point, what are you noticing to get them here? I'm noticing things like that. They, it, it's amazing how you can crawl back in when you reduce the number of errors. They're a little bit more under control. They seem to be almost a little bit too pumped up to start the match and had some unforced errors. And just as I say that, because Barr has been the one who has really been under control with very precise volleys, a rear miss there. Oh, that was a beautiful, the net. Oh, what a reset by Georgine. Because that was a hard ball to reset on. See the celebration as it continue the point. Turning drops comes up. Come on! Right, ATP. Nice around the post. Jimmy Unseens gets his paddle on it, but can't quite defend it. Moving to 9 9 second serve. Got the net cord mm. into the body. Caught a break there. Here it is. That's a tough break. He might even popped off the yeah. his brim of his hat there. Yeah, got it in the noggin. Lob takes it out of the air. It's perfectly placed. Saw the, the opening. You know, with the lob, it creates so much chaos when it's executed well. Yeah, Someone like Jardim shakes her head there. It was close, inches away from hitting that line. Mm, she'd like that one back. 
Does not miss that often. With now on the other side, a game point. There it is. Wow, so game one goes to Barr Weinbach. A tight game, 11-9 with a lot of back and forth. Stay tuned for more great action here on Zing Zang Championship Court at the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships. Margaritaville, it's not just a state of mind. Now it's a place to live. Introducing Latitude Margaritaville. New homes in 55 and better communities where you can live the Margaritaville lifestyle every day. Find your new home at LatitudeMargaritaville.com. So as we come back, you have a unique view up in the corner looking all the way across Zing Zang Championship Courts. On your left there, you see the Margaritaville License to Chill Lounge. And here's Susanna Barr serving at beginning game number two. A perfectly executed lob. Couldn't finish the point on the volley. One of the longer dink sessions we've had so far. Nope. Oh. She knew it right away. You could tell as soon as she hit it, she's like, nope. She put her hands up in the air, turned around. She knew it was going long. Yeah, let's get ready for the next point. That's not what I meant to do. It'll pop up the net. Oh, right into the left shoulder of Barr. Yeah, she couldn't get away from it in time. That would have been well out by you many You see feet. the hustle. He comes across. Bing. Yeah and just couldn't get away from it. Now, Shoji one, one, one. serving the bar. Got it. Got it. Oh, so bar was ready for that one. The high five between those two players. And we're tied at 1-1. One, one. Uh, game one is a, yet another example of how quickly the momentum can swing in this sport. They were trailing 0-7 and won 11-9. Barr and Weinbach. Nice interchange. Now that's pickleball at a high level. All four players involved. Barr gets the winner. Oh. <laughs> Dave Weinbach with a <laughs> nod of recognition at how Jimmy Onsins was able to. <laughs> oh, right there. Right there. Big Nonsense. fist bump. He, all, all, all four players were celebrating <laughs> that moment. They go, oh, boy, that's too good. I thought I won that point. That's impressive. That's impressive. Georgine, that was a, a good dink, and she reached across and hit it just perfectly. Yes. One, one, one. Uh, mm. Does it lift it up? Can't quite. Second serve comes to Georgine. That 
was well played in ATP by Wanbach. The Badger celebrates a fine shot. Yeah, even a little bit, uh, some of your ATPs are closer than that, a little farther back. He's able to bring it across. Mm. Oh. That time the net court didn't work for Barr. Unseen's there to put it away. We've got a lot of these uh, body blow shots happening in this uh, match so far, actually. Here's take a look. One thing every player on the court has one, one. is fantastic hands and reactions. Mm. Bar with the backhand there, unfortunately. Ends up going a little wide. In the back court. There's Bar there. Yeah, Unseen's put it right, right hip, which is a good place to aim on the right hander. Oh. Net cord winner. A little pop lands deep in the court. Thank you. Yeah, certainly we're seeing a lot of quick back and forth action up in the net. Unseen is just such an intimidating presence at the line, isn't he? Mm. She wants that back. Every once in a while, they'll hit a shot where I think they are human. Yeah. I can hit that shot. <laughs> well, that's uh, I practice all those parts of being a pro. So, you know, every time I hit the ball in the net, I say, oh, I'm just drilling for those other rare moments <laughs> exactly of being a pro. So here we are. Bar serves, one, three, two. Uh, well placed. On scenes goes, makes Weinbach stretch. Can't quite get to it. Mm -hmm. You saw her go for that. Oh, yeah. Well, I thought Weinbach had on scenes beaten on the forehand side. Lightning quick hands. Yeah. It, look, five fist pumps there by <laughs> on scenes as he's able to. Take that ball down deep to the four. It looks like a timeout's been called. As we are now at 5-1. Not quite the 7-0 of last game, but before it goes too far, Barr and Weinbach have called it a timeout. We'll have a Takea hydration break and be back with more action from the Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships. The Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, powered by Margaritaville, are brought to you by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's by Zing Zang. The number one Bloody Mary brand is on fire with new Zing Zang Blazing Bloody Mary. By Deco Turf, the official pickleball court surface of the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships. By Franklin, the official bag of the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships. And remember, you can purchase the official U.S. Open Pickleball Championships apparel at kitchpickleball.com. And as we come back, we see the players making their way back to the court. We look there, Simone Jardim, 
who moved from Michigan to Florida after being a coach at Michigan State in tennis. And now her entire life for her whole family, not only just as a player, but they run the Peak Performance Pickleball Academy, helping hundreds if not thousands of players improve their games. There you have Jamie Onsen serving. I thought that was a perfect time to call a timeout, and I would be virtually certain that, that Barr and Weinbach were talking in that timeout and said, we can't go after on scenes at the line. I mean, I, we've, got to, we've got to try to mix it up a little bit here. Little dribble over the net. And they go after it. It took about five shots in order to finally beat him. But they did go after him. His hands are incredibly quick. You have that He's look, it ends up hitting him in the thigh there. That's what makes this draw so fascinating is with here the mixed pro split age get to it after this point is that is that you'll see not only the dynamic of two young with two older players but then you've got the mixed gender as well and so you'll see some of the dinking where you'll have the lady against the man and seeing how that dynamic changes on those cross-court dinks there's so many variables at work that make the points so interesting Scenes again. You think sometimes that's the right play, just go right after his body. And, and here it is. There it is. You just quick flick of the wrist there. Six, two, one. So we're on the other side, 6 2. Mm. Bar leans in, takes it out of the air, doesn't quite get over the net. And we're at 7 2. One favor with her team and own scenes as own scene serves to bar. Well I say it all the time. Placement's more important than power. Power's great, but placement's even more important. And bar has been proving that through this entire match. Little pop off the net. Oh. On scenes is probably thinking, I did everything I wanted to do. I hit that lob, I was there, and it's, oh, that's the one I wanted. The high five celebration, Bar now serves. So a number of times they've been able to hold them. They had the timeout. That went in their favor. Unfortunately, with this back and forth only scoring when you serve, they still find themselves with this five-point deficit. And here we go. Will this turn the tide, similar to game number one? Yeah, Jargine cut that a little bit too close. She's kind of kicking herself and going, oh, I didn't have to make it that good. Ball goes up, a little high and long. His own scenes, ducks under it. Dribbles over the net, on scenes gets it. A lot of patience. That's where patience pays off for Unseens and Jarjim there is that they're looking for the opening and then Miss Dink wins the point for them.
Hmm. One back heats it up. Georgie gets her paddle on it, unfortunately. Coming back and Barr puts it away. Georgie making sure she's in the right server position. I've noticed that Weinbach a lot of times, here it is. you see it here, now hits the roller. And a lot of times I see that Weinbach, there's a couple of times where he could cut across and attack. He's perfectly happy deferring to his partner. Mm -hmm. He knows that almost all the time she's going to finish the point the way they want to finish the point. And so here they are, 3-8. turns and holds her hand to her mouth. Oh, how did I miss that? Mm. I don't usually miss that shot. Now it's a four-point game. Four, eight, one. Corner. The bar. Bar letting out an exclamation. Both a yell and now a smile as Weinbach says, Come on, trying to cheer on the crowd a little bit. A three point game. 8 5 was a turning point in game number one for them. Right, checking with the ref, ball called out. So with a side out, interestingly though, game number one. Had a lot of back and forth at eight, eight five, and then finally they close it out. We'll see if this time it goes the other way. On scenes will be the second server here. Hmm. And so they don't pick up point on serve. It's interesting in this match, a lot of times in this in this category, in this draw, you'll see one player dominating on each side. Uh, here, all four hold their own. There's not anyone who's covering the entire court. Mm. And Barr, once again. You see why the Badger Weinbach defers to his partner? Yeah, with the sketchers. Pick a ball replay. Right there, without question. And she went right after on scenes and said, I'm coming after you. She has a military background. She's tough. Hmm. Hmm. Another one. Nice reset, now all four players are back at the net. Reaching across. <laughs> what a nice point, huh? Oh, you never give up. Never give up on a point. There were too many outstanding resets to count in that. And they need a breather. So with the two-point game, Barr Weinbach fighting their way. A timeout has been called by Jardim on scenes. We'll take a Takea hydration break, break and see what happens next. The Minto US Open Pickleball Championships powered by Margaritaville are brought to you by Latitude Margaritaville and Minto. Change your latitude to the active adult paradise of Latitude Margaritaville by Naples, Marco Island, and the Everglades, Florida's paradise coast. 
by Skechers Pickleball. Experience performance comfort on the court with the all-new Skechers Viper Court Pro. And by Margaritaville Hotels and Resorts. Check in and chill out at margaritavilleresorts.com. So let's take a look at that amazing last point with all that interaction there. That there just continues overheads and smashes. Here's another great reset there. Then they get back into the dink game. All four work their way to the line once again. And then finally the miss at the end. A little bit of everything in that point as we join live action. This time, Shajim heats it up. Weinbach got his dink just a touch high. Shajim recognizes it. So that side out brings it back to them with a two point lead. Rare miss by on scenes. Put away volley. Barr has done that the entire match, reaching across. She hits contact with the volley so far out in front of her. Creates an extra margin of error. Pushing him back. On scenes goes down. He rolls a little bit. Don't know if he hit. Let's take a look. Comes back overhead. So he's still down. Just got back up. Crowd gives a cheer of encouragement. That's why we say whenever possible, try not to backpedal. It can be dangerous, even on the pro level. They're willing to wait it out. Mm. Targene tries to take that low ball and attack. And especially trying up the line, the net's a little bit higher on the sides. We are tied up. 8-8. Eight, eight. Can Barr and Weinbach do the big rally again in game two like they did in game one? Weinbach trailed 7-0 in the first game, 1-11-9, and then trailed 7-2 in this game. Now it's 8-8. Well, everybody's involved there. Mm -hmm. Jarjim finishes it off. So as they hold him off, but as they've been sitting on eight for quite a while now, similar to Game one, amazing. Oh, comes across to try to poach and ultimately does not work out. I think on scenes was caught off guard because the ball was not hit nearly as hard as he thought it was. And he was so far ahead of it, he had to stop, put him in an awkward position and he hit it in the nut. On scenes on the court again. <laughs> Jarjim. There you go. Decides she gets to, to sit down with him. <laughs> you know what they say as The crowd partners. loved that, man. <laughs> uh, you didn't quite catch it on camera exactly, but uh, here you go. We might have a little look. There it so is. As I say, we're partners. We're partners in this. Let's well, take they, a moment. They say partners need to work together, and that means in go. everything. So Bar serves. Jarjim returns. Yeah. 
Very good. Monsignor's block keeps in play. I tell you, Barr's constantly smiling. Seems to be having a good time yeah. out there no matter what happens. Love to see that. Although she might not be smiling after that one. A little bit frustrated with missing that shot, and we're still at 8-8. Eight, eight. Mm. Weinbach came up the line. Jargine made a great get. And here's that replay by Skechers Pickleball. And Barr finishes it after the nice setup by his partner, the Badger. And Barr up to the task again. She's so compact up there. She doesn't have any extra motion at all. It allows her to get those hard drives. <laughs> and finally, 9 8. The 8 8 tie is broken. One by going cross court, a couple different places, but oh, yeah. it's a little high. Yep, Unseen recognizes that with that long reach of his. You get up high at all, and on scenes is going to finish it. That's a rare, yeah. rare giveaway by Barr. Just kicking herself about that as Barr and Weinbach two points away from the match. Yeah. Crowd lets out a yell. We got another tie. 9-9. Nine, nine. Here's a look. Sound scenes finishing off through bar. Jargine the serve. Just like that. We have a game point. Jarjim and Unseen's one point away. And With a quick time timeout, out. then been called yes, exactly, by the receiving team. Bar Weinbach said, we don't like where this is going. And we have the players going back to catch themselves, take a, take a hydration break. And we'll see what happens next. Open Pickleball Championships, powered by Margaritaville, are brought to you by Total Pickleball, your one-stop pickleball shop. Free two-day shipping on the widest selection of pickleball products. By Franklin X40, the official ball of the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships. By Gamma Pickleball, the official grip of the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships. And by Yola, for the champion in you. And as we come back with a, another view, thanks Hugo out there operating that camera, we see Susanna Barr heading back after Barr and Weinbach have called a timeout. They fought their way back, similar in game number one and game number two, they were down 7-2, brought it up and they found themselves tying it up at 9-9, struggled at 8-8 for a while, got off of eight, but now Jardim and scenes with their game point. Trying to force a 
deciding third game. Looking for an opening to attack. Hushed crowd. Oh, critical. And it went off the net cord, fell on the bar and wine box side, and we are all locked up. We have two 11 9 games. Jarjim and on scenes wins that one 11 9 after bar and wine box. Let's take a look at that moment. Mm. Just can't get it over the net. So, oh. ladies and gentlemen, we are going to number three here at the Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, powered by Margaritaville, and see who gets another step closer to gold. Margaritaville, it's not just a state of mind. Now, it's a place to live. Introducing Latitude Margaritaville. New homes in 55 and better communities where you can live the Margaritaville lifestyle every day. Find your new home at LatitudeMargaritaville.com. And as we come back to see how game number three unfolds in this pro mixed split age bracket, you see there Susanna Barr getting ready to receive Ooh. Ooh, first referee time. with an eye, exactly. First time so far in this match. Absolutely, stepped into the kitchen. It even happens to the best of players. Rusty, I don't know how this match can really be any closer. Not only between the teams, but all four players are involved in an equal amount. Hmm. No one is out there dominating. Hmm. Combination, you know, you pop up one a little too high, and it may not be the next shot that finishes, but it's the one after that. Four, one, Put you on the heels. Ooh, good get. Oh, they're still in it. Oh. A rare miscommunication there between Ansees and Jarjeev. They were able to get it at the last minute, but then put him at a disadvantage. Hmm. She gets it. Mm. And it went right through the wickets of Onsen's, but he yeah. hits the baseline for a winner. Exactly. Look here. He stepped up because I think he thought it was going long, and it just lands in. That was a beautifully executed yeah. lob, which allowed Weinbach the opportunity to hit the winner. Seems in a dink battle. One by the Badger. Three, one, two. Uh. 
little pop up the net. Oh. Mm. And Barr was able to get right back into the point. And for the first time, Barr and Weinbach have jumped out in the lead in the game. They trailed in both the first and second game and trailed significantly. And now they have a 4-1 advantage. Oh. Perfect lob. Perfect lob at the perfect time. And Jarjim lets out a nice shot, recognizes it. Jarjim was just leaning forward a little bit, anticipating a dig. Uh, speaking of nice touch. Box body. Yep. And oftentimes you say deep cross court. Here's that See, look. There it is right there. He's trying to get his paddle behind him. Couldn't quite get there. But they do like to deep down the line. Wow. John Scenes heats it up right towards Weinbach's head, actually. Yep. Is that called hunting the badger? <laughs> I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> wow. mm. That is so well nice played. Nice interchange, yeah. Our and Weinbach good. embrace after that point, and they earned it. That's Skechers Pickleball instant replay. It's a put away and a celebration. Jarjim serves to Weinbach. Ooh, gets it over. That might be the match of the, the, point, the, of the, the point of the match right there. And what here a it is. Couple of a dribble over the net. The heat. What a couple of spectacular gets by Jarjim. There's a two. reason why she's called a living legend. Right out. May have jinxed her. And we're all knotted up at five. Five, five, one. Five, five, two. A little pop off the net goes their way. Got a lot of net cords here. In game three, on scenes worked that point beautifully with his dinks, pulling Weinbach wide. Five, five, one.
keeps it in play. One of the longest points in the match. Feel the crowd waiting. This is what's called sweaty palm time. Ooh. And a net cord ends it. The longest point of the match goes to Barr and Weinbach. And as Dave raises his hands to the roof to get the crowd involved, we have a timeout called. One minute. They all need a breather, as do we. So with the Takea hydration break and some amazing action happening here at Zing Zang Championship Court, we'll see if the teams holding it at five can pull away. The Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, powered by Margaritaville, are brought to you by Latitude Margaritaville and Minto. Change your latitude to the active adult paradise of Latitude Margaritaville by Naples, Marco Island, and the Everglades, Florida's Paradise Coast, by Skechers Pickleball. Experience performance comfort on the court with the all-new Skechers Viper Court Pro, and by Margaritaville Hotels and Resorts. Check in and chill out at margaritavilleresorts.com. And once again, we are in this beautiful venue with this amazing shade structure. The weather here in Florida is beautiful so often, but right now there's a little little bit of a breeze. It's not too hot for the players here on this championship court. Uh, it, was, it was spectacular today. It's just darn near perfect. And I can't say that for the first couple of days of the tournament, it was smoking hot. Uh, as is the action is in this match, I'll, I'll tell you that's, you really flip a coin of who's going to win this match. I mean, it can't be any closer, obviously, 5-5 five, exactly. five, final game. Yeah, so 5-5, five, five, game 1, 11-9, the other 9-11, and here we are. And there's the winner by Weinbach. As I've said couple of times already in this match, but I think it's worth noting again, there is not a single player that's out here dominating that. as Weinbach puts that point away there for, for the vic or for the winning shot on that. Keeps it 5-5 five, five and they earn the serve. with the winner and Barr not happy with the lob there. Five, five, two. He is smiling still. A little pop over the net. Don't see he gets it. Another net. No shortage of net cords in this third game. Oh, double that cord. So here we are in game number three, and multiple times we've had these longer dig sessions. Why do you think that's happening now? I think we're in what's called crunch time mm -hmm. and don't want to force it too soon. So on scene serves. And I subscribe to this strategy. I mean, just give your opponent an opportunity to give you uh, a chance to open up and hit a winner. So as Jardim there hits it into the body of Weinbach, another timeout is called. Uh, but the other team will have another Takea hydration break. And we'll see if they can get off five. Here we are, just no motion, but some great action with another view of Zing Zang Championship Court. So as you can see there, all around the court, they've put in these custom 
boxes, these gold boxes, and there's some people celebrating, saying, hey, look, we're on championship court. Uh, one of the nice things about these boxes, they give you coolers and drinks, and so it's not just the view, it's the it's the treats and, and the beverages and also the sorts of things like that. And so the breeze kind of comes through here. It's nice. On the other side, those palm trees you can see that heads on out to the Minto community's development, which is beautiful. And some of our aerials, sometimes you can see that. There's some folks waving. Hey, wave to the camera. All right, here they are. You see the stands are full. It's early in the day. We're moving through the bracket. People from literally all over the country, all over the world even, different ages, uh, enjoying their time here at the U.S. Open. You know what's great about this this whole tournament and this venue, center court, between matches, they've got the music blaring and people were dancing in the boxes here. There's a, it's such, I love the vibe of the place. And you know, again, we keep calling it the world's largest pickleball party and we're seeing phenomenal competition and play, yet in a festive atmosphere, it really is unique. If you haven't been here, you need to. As we come back from that timeout, Onsin serves to bar. Nice put away by Barr. And they get off of six. I mean, get off of the tie of fives. Six, five, two. to serve. Up by a point in the final game. Jarjim has been showing. Oh, Weinbach calls it out. I can't overrule that call. And she does not. Oh, they thought it touched him. Ball was called out. Jarjim not all that pleased in gathering herself. Five, six, one. One box serves. Patience. Yeah, you see the a little worked up there on that side of the court, huh? Five, six, two. The Badger, Coachy. <laughs> it's called poking the bear. Hardly a seat available. I do not see a seat available as we're seeing legends go at each six, other six, in a perfectly even match. It's six in game three. Weinbach yells to the crowd, come on, let's go. Pumped up after that interchange. Saints go toe to toe, but the Badger winning that one. With a look at the Skechers pickleball replay, coming down again. Six, six, I mean, they're doing a great job of keeping that ball down at his feet, right? Yeah, that's a long way down. He's so tall. And the tie is broken. Seven six with Bar to serve. Seven six one. Oh. 
Onsin goes to do a quick deceptive back at bar and ends up working out, catches her off guard a little bit. Such quick hands, that backhand flick that he does, drives it right into Weinbach, returns the favor that Weinbach did to him a point or two earlier. Does it again. A little bit of a... Unexpected, too. I mean, that was a low ball. Barr wasn't quite ready for it. Six, seven, one. Tries to go for the lar. Barr has been doing a great job of taking those out of the air this time. Unfortunately, goes into the net. And we're tied up again at 7-7. Seven, seven. Seven, seven, one. Time bar goes right at on scenes. Weinbach would want that one back. That was the one he was looking for. And the tie is broken at 8-7. So in the first two games, one and two, we were hanging around eight for a while. We'll see if they can keep their momentum going through eight. Again, on scenes, shows his quick hands. And interestingly, right, they said, wait a second. They got to nine a little bit faster than we would have wanted. They were able to hold him in game one, held him in game two, both victories leading them along the way. And so here we are with 9-7. The Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, powered by Margaritaville, are brought to you by Paddletech the official paddle of the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships by Southern Tide, the premium coastal lifestyle brand, by Takeya, hydration is an all-day game, and by the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships. Save the date, April 13th to 20th, 2024. So Simone Jardim makes her way back to the court. In a unique situation compared to the first two games, they've blown right through eight. So six, seven, eight in a row. Uh, as the timeouts and goal, we'll see if they can keep their momentum going. And claim this match. And there's four quick points in a row. What I st started to say earlier a few points ago, is Yarjim is showing why she still is one of the best defenders in the entire sport. Yeah. She has kept them in points where they had no business yeah, staying in those good. points. And we're looking at match point. Weinbach. Not yet. Nope. We don't want this match to end. This catches pickleball replay. Weinbach serves. 
Jardine returns to on scenes. Zigzag pattern on the dinks. Go across court. Then they mix it up, go down the line. Yeah. Line box speeds it up. Grabs the point, pulls them within two. You want that back? Yes. To state the obvious, every point is critical here. Right, yeah, and no one's trying to get necessarily too cute here. You know, I've got to give your opponent a chance to miss, and that's allows Jargine. Here's to match serve. point. And there it is. Match point going to Jargine and Onsins after two. Great games, game number three ends up going in their favor and they will make their way into the gold medal match. Take a look at a Skechers Pickleball instant replay. And on scenes as he had done the entire match, is so imposing at the line, puts away the winner and gets the victory. Don't go away. Here from Minto US Open Pickleball Championships powered by Margaritaville. Margaritaville, it's not just a state of mind. Now, it's a place to live. Introducing Latitude Margaritaville. New homes in 55 and better communities where you can live the Margaritaville lifestyle every day. Find your new home at latitudemargaritaville.com. Margaritaville, it's not just a state of mind. Now, it's a place to live. Introducing Latitude Margaritaville. 
New homes in 55 and better communities where you can live the Margaritaville lifestyle every day. Find your new home at LatitudeMargaritaville.com. All right, so you can see there Eva Welcher once again finding her way on championship court after helping us out so amazingly well yesterday in the booth. She's competing and she's been on this court before. You can see her history here at the U.S. Open uh, in 21, meddling multiple times as well as in 22, and she's about to make her way to gold in this match. Uh, strong, strong, one of the top senior pro women players in the industry. And there, Kyle Yates, her partner, who many people have seen here at the Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships before, but if not, Kyle was one of the first and youngest full-blown pros, and he helped to bring this to action. He's one with Dave Weinbach, who you just saw play, multiple championships here at the U.S. Open. A strong player, very knowledgeable of the game, even though he is younger, he's had years of experience. And as we see Megan Fudge back there raising her hand as she's just been announced with some applause, we have Paul Olin as well, her partner. Paul, a really, really strong senior pro player. So on this on this particular match, we have some amazing gameplay. Right there, it says 2022 silver, but just the other day, he got a gold in singles pro here at the U.S. Open Pickleball Championship. So it'll be interesting to see these pairings and how they come about. His partner again is Megan Fudge over there in the blue and the white. And Megan, a strong player. She's the newest one here to pickleball in the industry. They kind of found it during COVID. Her, she and her husband, Ryler DeHart, strong tennis background. Uh, they played tennis at University of Illinois and uh, their whole family is now committed to pickleball. They actually sold their home recently and they're full-time RVers as they're traveling all around and growing and enjoying the sport. Also excellent coaches. All these players here have done a lot to teach and encourage other people to enjoy pickleball, to improve their game. So I expect fully, don't you, Tim, with some amazing gameplay. I'll tell you, this team of Megan Fudge and Paul Owen is a team to watch. They come in as the number nine seed, but they're a threat to win it all. I've had a chance to actually watch them quite a bit today, and Megan Fudge is really tough, and she's relatively new to the game. As you mentioned, a former Big Ten tennis player at University of Illinois, comes from Illini country, and she does not have a weakness and is a passionate fighter. And Paul Owen, he is incredibly consistent. They do not give away points. So this match is going to have a different dynamic than the one that we had last time because Yates has a tendency to take over the court. He is going to be out there dominating. So this, we're going to see a lot of interesting points in this match. Yeah, and different styles of gameplay. And uh, as Olin is, uh, our, uh, some of our competitors are getting used to this roaming camera, making eye contact here or there. Um, but as the referee begins to call time in, Olin is serving to Welsher. Out. Hometown favorite. Zero, zero, one. Well sure to serve. She actually teaches at this facility. So very much a crowd favorite. White. And we're going to see a lot more of that from Yates. He is incredibly aggressive. One, zero, one. Point. Yates is constantly looking at being on the attack. So the, the interesting strategy here for Fudge and Olin is how do you go behind Yates? Because Yates is going to be Two, zero, one. doing a lot of poaching and being extra aggressive. Point. Remember, we saw so much of that patience in the previous match. This is going to be much more of a clinic in attacking. Point. Four, zero, one. Yeah. Point. And just like that, Welsher and Yates have a five-point lead. 
as yet another winner by Yates. Five zero one. Nicely done. Yates goes across and Welsh recovers the distance. And a quick timeout here. They need to reset. They're already down 6 nothing, and that didn't take long. So with the Takea hydration break, we will see how game number one continues to progress. Margaritaville are brought to you by Latitude Margaritaville and Minto. Change your latitude to the active adult paradise of Latitude Margaritaville by Naples, Marco Island, and the Everglades, Florida's paradise coast. By Skechers Pickleball. Experience performance comfort on the court with the all-new Skechers Viper Court Pro. And by Margaritaville Hotels and Resorts. Check in and chill out at margaritavilleresorts.com. As we come back here, we see both Yates and Welsher with their matching pink hats, actually. They've had a chance to play with uh, each other quite a bit, both being from Florida and Naples. And Yates and Fort Myers. Welsher serves to Olin. Second serve. Let's see if that timeout pays off dividends for Fudge and Six, zero, Olin two. as Yates serves. Point. Seven, zero, two. Okay, Olin receiving. See if they can get off the goose egg here. Get the bagel off the board to mix my <laughs> metaphors. Quite, quite any more? They got a donut there. No, I'm okay with that. <laughs> Second third. Yates with the winner. Not the start that the ninth seeded team of Fudge and Owen were looking for. Not at all. Looking to change the momentum here. They just need to settle down. Side up. Kyle Yates is just so oppressive and impressive at the line. Just so quick, always looking to attack. Seven zero one. So still with a 7-0 lead, Yates serves to Olin. There's that aggressiveness. That's exactly what we were expecting. Yates cuts a crop. Now sometimes if you can catch it, it opens up the court. Because Welsher can't get over there in time to cover. The energy of Fudge and Olin a little bit flat here. Yes, sir. Paul not too happy with that Eight, moment. Zero, two. Side out. And Fudge runs on passion. That's uh, that's her fuel, and. That's what's really key when you're down eight nothing. You gotta okay. I gotta dig deep here. Let's reset one point at a time. Just one point at a time. Great. Second serve. They were defending well. Yeah, Sketchers pick up an instant replay. Over again, one overhead after the other. And ultimately, yeah, second serve. Too much, yeah. Fudge serves to Yates. 
Mm. Olman looks to go behind Yates, ultimately goes wide. It's uncharacteristic of Olin. Uh, he, as you mentioned, he won the singles gold yesterday. He does not give away many points. Yates coming across again. This is where the, the dynamic is so interesting because they, they want to get the ball to Wilshire. Here's a look at it. And he cuts across for the winner. Nine zero one. So you've got to keep him honest, though. So Wilshire serves to fudge. Second serve. This time Wilshire's a, see she's a little disappointed in that moment. And they move on to second serve, but they're two points away from closing out in rapid fashion, game number one. That great hands by Yates. That was a good overhead by Fudge. Yeah, absolutely. And then ultimately was sent back. Couldn't quite drop it in. The, the challenge, and again, the diversity yeah, of shots yeah. after that overhead, off balance, coming back down, and then trying to do that reset. And Ten, now here we are at game point. Yates serving. Mm. Point. So, in quick fashion, almost surprisingly, you can see on their expression, game number one goes to Welsher Yates, 11-0. Take a quick look at the Skechers Pickleball Instant Replay. That's almost a, a fitting way to end this first game. And, and so, Olin and Fudge, they just have to say, all right, let's forget about it. It's over. And we'll be right back with more action from Zing Zang Championship Court and the Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships powered by Margaritaville. Wasted away. Margaritaville, it's not just a state of mind. Now, it's a place to live. Introducing Latitude Margaritaville. New homes in 55 and better communities where you can live the Margaritaville lifestyle every day. Find your new home at latitudemargaritaville.com. Welcome back to the beginning of game number two here. Game number one went pretty quickly and surprisingly to Welsher Yates. Not because they are not amazing, but because Olin and Fudge, I mean, 11-0, it was really quite a bit of a surprise. It was. They ran into a buzzsaw in that first game, and you know, as we said going into the break, they just have to forget about it. It's over. It's only one game. This is brand new at 0-0. I mean, two totally different approaches, right? Yates, as you were saying, really running across the court, taking up the majority cart. Welsh are very comfortable allowing him to do that. It obviously worked well. She's now serving at 1 0 2. Side out. The strategy for Fudge and Owen obviously is to try to target Welsher. Yates is just so lightning quick, so you have to keep him honest and try to go behind him at times. Second serve. Attempted lob, went way wide. Yeah, and I'm imagining someone you know going on in their head. How do you get out of that? Zero one two. Zero eleven. The With passion. a big celebration, they're like, finally, one point on the board. And, uh, you know, if you don't know it, Paul Olin, to take a look here. 
Look at that big victory. Oh, vote. That feels, it's I think, like you win the match, right? I think for the first time in four or five years, I've seen him do something like that. So we'll see if that changes their momentum. For those of us that play, we've all been there and go, oh, finally, I get a point off the board. So maybe not. We're one, back. 1-1. One, one. One, one, but at least 1 versus 0, right? Fudge and Owen, I think, are struggling trying to adjust to the Two, aggressiveness one, one. of Yates. Comes at them so quickly, they seem to have come out a little bit flat, somewhat shell shocked at this point. Nice reset there. Hmm. Second serve. Kyle tries to lift that right over the net, barely makes it. You can hear the crowd. Oh, that was close. Moving to his second serve and. Two, one, two. Walsh to fudge. Kyle is just saying, I want to do whatever I need to take to win. I Look at am that. going to take Look. over this court. So, okay, in rec play, you know, a lot of people watch these videos and they're like, that guy's an idiot. He's so horrible. When you're in a championship like this, Three, after one, this two. point, let's talk about that. I was just discussing this with a fan here at the U.S. Open of saying this isn't rec play. And you see that the best players, they will target. They will take over the court. If they feel that they can win the point on their own, they're going to do it. The goal here is to win. One, okay. three, one. And now we go back. Fudge serving. Another good one. Whether I, you agree or disagree with the strategy, it was exciting to watch. I believe. Great get by Olin to keep it in play. The defensive fudge there. They stayed in the point. They yeah. kept staying in the point, and Yates just took over the court. I believe he hit 98% of the shots in that point. One, three, two. But it's working for him. Side out. You say when it's working, you keep doing what you're doing. And they've won 14 out of the first 15 points. Second serve. Yates goes down the line. Olin calls it wide. But, but regardless of the fact that they're at 3-1, game two is playing out differently. Uh, the defensiveness, three, the one, ability two. to stay in the battle longer with Fudge and Olin is different. Oh, I think Olin thought that that was popping out. He, he kind of hit the net and he sort of gave up, but it landed in. He, he did. He thought the point was over and go, oh my gosh, it's still going. And you're right, in, in, in the second game, I, Olin came out flat. I, it was a bit surprising. I, and I think he's gained his, regained his bearings here, and they're staying in the points a lot better. They're not giving away the points they did before. But then how do you beat that? Yeah. Well, and uh, you know, to say all easier said than done. So here we are with a quick Skechers pickleball instant replay with a put away by Kyle Yates. And a timeout's been called, so we'll have another decay hydration break and be back in a minute. The Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships powered by Margaritaville are brought to you by Latitude Margaritaville and Minto. 
Change your latitude to the active adult paradise of Latitude Margaritaville. By Naples, Marco Island, and the Everglades, Florida's Paradise Coast. By Skechers Pickleball. Experience performance comfort on the court with the all-new Skechers Viper Court Pro. And by Margaritaville Hotels and Resorts. Check in and chill out at margaritavilleresorts.com. As we come back inside Zing Zang Championship Court with one of our amazing referees, which we can't do this without them. And as our teams are there, you can see Fudge and Olin on the right talking a little bit like, how are we going to switch this up? What are we going to do differently? As Yates has been attacking nonstop. I mean, I've seen his gameplay over the years, but it's, it's almost like today he's just on fire. He's in true beast mode. Welsher and he have played together quite a bit, so you know they came in agreeing on that strategy. Even there, all the way across, right? And normally there, you'd, you'd think, okay, that, that's Welsher's ball. But Yates knows what he's doing. Welsher is perfectly comfortable with that and saying, I'm going to drive that down and then come across and hit the winning volley. Now that was a nice use of some misdirection. I was just going to say, as, as I was watching that point, what they need to do is they've got to disguise their shots. Uh, Yates is so good at anticipation. They've got to go opposite direction, try to go behind him. They've got to do the unexpected. Oh. That's exceptional. Solid ATP. Megan appropriately goes to come across to cover the empty space, but Kyle's able to go at such a sharp angle. But here they are still, 1-6-2, a tighter game than one. There are some things that can't be taught. Side out. Hmm. Paul a little frustrated. Looking up to the sky as that ball doesn't quite make it over. 6-1-1. Oh. That's one of the times net cord didn't help him there. A little high. Wait. It's so interesting to watch Everybody, games. Kyle's pointing to Eva saying, look at her, look at her. She hung in there, she held off, she held off, she held off. Let's take a look here. Right and there. There's that, that net cord. Yeah, sometimes, usually a net cord works to your advantage, and that time it didn't. Hmm. So as we come back, whilst well, you're serving, 7 1 1. Oh. Yates again. Coming all Jumping the across, way across the corner. Nineteen of the twenty points scored have been by Welsher and Yates. Well, and you know, I know it's easier said than done, right? I mean, the short version is a lot of these Fudge and Olin are just hitting the ball just a little too high. E even here, try to do the lob, not high enough. Uh, they were trying to do the drops. The drops were a little too high. And Kyle, right now, his speed and his athleticism, he's able to grab all of them. And they need to talk it over again. So another timeout. Thank you, Takea, for sponsoring these hydration breaks. And we'll see if Olin and Fudge can turn it around. The Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, powered by Margaritaville, are brought to you by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. By Zing Zang. 
The number one Bloody Mary brand is on fire with new Zing Zang Blazing Bloody Mary by Deco Turf, the official pickleball court surface of the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships by Franklin, the official bag of the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships. And remember, you can purchase the official U.S. Open Pickleball Championships apparel at kitchpickleball.com. So as we come back and Fudge and Nolan are taking a timeout to see if they can either calm down or see if they can come up with a new strategy. Is it, let's watch Welcher serve here. And that time they decided to go. This time Fudge with a big yell. That time they decided to go right after Yates, and that's, Fudge needs that fuel. And they just need to go back to doing what they do best. They've got to stick to their game. See there, Paul trying to attack up at the net. I mean, the other thing is Kyle has done thousands and thousands of drops and resets, and he consistently is finding himself making it up to the net. They, they can't seem to keep him back, and they can't seem to keep him on his side of the court. And that was quick. 11-0, 11-1, Welsher and, and Yates. We're looking at a celebration hug between Welsher and Yates. Arms up and smiles to the crowd. The local favorites a bit here between Naples and Fort Myers. And once again, they're finding their way one step closer to the gold medal. And there it is. It's fitting that Yates off his paddle. They win it 11-0, 11-1, and it was just a clinic. We're gonna take a break. Thank you to all of our sponsors. We'll be back in a moment with more action. Margaritaville, it's not just a state of mind. Now, it's a place to live. Introducing Latitude Margaritaville. New homes in 55 and better communities where you can live the Margaritaville lifestyle every day. Find your new home at latitudemargaritaville.com. Margaritaville, it's not just a state of mind. Now, it's a place to live. Introducing Latitude Margaritaville. New homes in 55 and better communities where you can live the Margaritaville lifestyle every day. Find your new home at latitudemargaritaville.com.
Margaritaville, it's not just a state of mind. Now, it's a place to live. Introducing Latitude Margaritaville. New homes in 55 and better communities where you can live the Margaritaville lifestyle every day. Find your new home at LatitudeMargaritaville.com. Margaritaville, it's not just a state of mind. Now, it's a place to live. Introducing Latitude Margaritaville. New homes in 55 and better communities where you can live the Margaritaville lifestyle every day. Find your new home at LatitudeMargaritaville.com. So as we look at Kyle Yates there, get ready, ladies and gentlemen. We are about to partake in a gold medal match. Kyle Yates is his partner on the other side, warming up with Eva Welsher. Yates is no stranger to the US Open and gold medal matches, and we'll see today if he can claim another one. He and his partner just blew through their last match. What was that score? It was 11-0, 11-1. Unbelievable, he's on fire, total beast mode. His partner there, Eva Welsher, who's saying the strategy works. You know, in this scenario, you know, she's a great player herself. She has diverse set of shots and technique, and she's also no stranger, has claimed bronze and silver. She's a champion here in 2021, and we'll see if she can be a part of this gold medal going her way. On the other side, we have Simone Jargine. And she has won time and time and time again. A different strategy, so it'll be interesting how she they fare off against Jargine and um, Onsens. Game one. And they are getting set to start. Onsens, 53 years old from Sao Paulo, Brazil, a high-level tennis player, was once ranked number 34 in the world in singles. And here we go. That ball goes a little too high, puts it away. So if you are just joining us, we've seen a lot of different strategy in play, and we'll fill you in about the players throughout the match. Um, zero, zero, one. But this pairing, the Onsens and Jardim, might see a little bit more heat and action versus defense. What? It's going to be fascinating to see how this match plays out because Yates has just totally dominated one, the court, zero, taken over the whole court. Will he have that ability to do this against this team in this gold medal match? That's a big question. Onsen's relatively new to the circuit and we have rapidly become impressed. Good hustle up to the net. Oh, and as you were talking about placement versus power. That's it. Perfect spot by Yates. He didn't try to do too much with it. He went to the open court, got the winner. Two, zero, two. So second serve, 2-0. Great lob by Welsher. The reset. That is textbook retrieval of a lob. That's what you want to do is you want to drop. You retrieve the lob, come back. He hit a perfect drop to get back into the point, and they won it. Yeah. Three, zero, two. So we find ourselves with a 3 nothing lead. What? Four, zero, two.
Welsher and Yates are in an unfamiliar position here. They won 22 of the 23 points scored in the last match, and it was over in a blink of an eye, and now they're suddenly down 5-0. There you go. A little bit of what you've seen. Kyle jumping around the corner, putting it away. And, and again, there are differences. Let's like, look at the Skechers pickleball instant replay. It's clean. He clears all the way out. Every once in a while, we got some new people watching. You are legally able to jump over there, courtesy yeah, five, Ernie five. Perry, Pacific Northwest, being part of naming that shot. That is going to be a fascinating dynamic as this match unfolds. Yates attacking and the excellent defense one, by Chargine, who are going to win the majority of those battles. Just high enough with that height, with that reach, the speed and the angle of that shot one, five, goes in their way. That's the dynamic we were talking about, is Yates likes to cut across and take that ball. And Jarjim, so watch how she covers and hits the angle. A little horn in the background there. Her ability to do those sharp angles like they're going to keep Kyle honest. Good hustle, goes long. Almost. Didn't miss by much. Take a look at the Skechers. Five, one, Instant replay comes down. Goes long. Sir, Onsins comes up. So Welsher hangs in there. Contributes to that point. Recall. Or that side out, bringing them over. One, five, one. Looking for an opening. Oh. Excellent exchange. Unsons and Yates' hands are so quick, so fast, that that will not be the last battle we'll see in this match. I think we're already seeing that Yates is respecting his opponents more here. And he's staying home a little bit more because he knows the possibility of getting burned. There, he heats it up again. Goes off. One scene's paddle. So those slight miss hits three, just five, wide five. enough. And we're closing the gap at 3 5. Don't see that often. Nope. As On Scenes pushes that volley long. Four, five, and now Walsher and Yates within a point. Mm. Oh, that was a great drop by Kyle, right? You know, and hit the ball up in transition, and ultimately, unfortunately, let's take a look. Sketcher's pick a ball, instant replay. Watch how he lays off this. That is so hard to lay off that shot. A great eye. You say shoulder high, let it fly, but when it's coming that fast, it's so difficult to do. Little double hit there. Goes into the net, forcing a side out. And Welch are just a little bit frustrated there. She had the backhand lined up there. They had Five, four, one. clashing paddles. Five. 
little miscommunication there, I think. That's why it's so often we say, when in doubt, go down the middle. Try to create confusion. Hmm. Number of those defensive shots by Jarjim, and she steps up. Had the opportunity, just goes a little bit long. You can see by her expression, she thought she had that. Four, five, she made one. the right play, just the execution, just to touch off. A little soft serve by Welsher. That's oh, nice play by He's Yates. Going, yeah, a little bit coming across. Attacks into the body of Jaime. Five, five, one. Well, they pulled even after trailing by five. Well, again, you wonder, you know, they were so on fire. Kyle was just, he, he wasn't missing anything, but they had to sit for a while. So maybe they came out a little cold and. They appear to be warming up now. Lob goes long. Interestingly, you're seeing a lot more of those lobs in this mixed split age. But even, you know, I heard some people talking, different commentators are like, hey, I'm starting to see those pros lob. Maybe I should try what the pros doing. Whereas once upon a time, People would be made fun of for lobbing. Exactly. But the lobbing is for losers is right. what I heard before. So Yates serves to Jarjim. It was actually, I want to give credit to one of the Hall of Famers, Pat Kane, unfortunately passed away recently. But he was a big part of the game, and he was making a joke how he had lobbed for years. And now the lob was coming back. All right. And it, we've seen it with great effectiveness in every match, really. And so as we find ourselves still with a tight game going back and forth, 5-6. Oh, right on the line. It's, uh, you know, everyone's like, oh, drop it, drop it, drop it. But it's harder said than done. You know, let's take a look here. Sketchers pick a ball. Yep, there it is. Right. Great lob. And they get their paddle on it, but they can't quite drop it enough. Ultimately, puts it away. Hmm. And going back to our discussion about the lob, that's what makes it so effective is you want to try to make your opponent uncomfortable and it creates chaos. Six, six, it, it really puts pressure on your opponent when it's done well. So Wilshire serves. It's just wide. Point. Seven, six, one. Nicely done. Good get by Yates. Unfortunately, textbook. Yeah. Yeah, it was textbook pickle there. Here it Drew is. him wide. Sketchers pickleball, instant Look replay. It. Draw out wide. Jarjim comes in, and the court is opened up. Second serve, Yates. See Yates, he's looking down at the line a little bit. That did skid a little bit, it looked like. Mm. Uh, but then going back and forth. That's not necessarily Yates' favorite Six, seven, way of one. playing. He likes to be aggressive. He can be patient when he has to, but boy, he wants to attack. Uh. So, you know, that's the thing, like, how fast can the senior player move? And in that scenario, the sketcher's pickleball, it's a replay. He tried, was able to come up, pulled him up to the net, and unfortunately left the other side of the court too open. That's the danger when you're going to poach. Look at that. That far, 
you oh, better pops over the make net. the shot. Oh, there it is. We're tied up at 7-7. Seven, seven. Second serve. Good get by Georgine. Oh, off the net. Nice point. Beautiful point. And a little bit of everything in that. Yeah, crisscrossing. Yeah, you know, the coverage, right? You cover for your partner. That's some great stuff there. If someone just tuned in, they'd probably go, boy, this looks like a gold medal match. Guess it what it is. <laughs> All right, checking with the ref, making sure the right server, right position. We actually have seen that uh, so far in the tournament, some people making that mistake. Got to remember, you can ask your ref nowadays. This goes to drive down, that uncharacteristic. Yeah, rear miss there. Ground strike going wide. Seven, eight, one. One of the many fascinating aspects of pickleball, especially in a match such as this, is the cat and mouse games that are going on. Of Yates wanting to be aggressive, and how do you blunt his aggressiveness? A little tweener leg, comes back, just can't quite get it. Everybody likes it regardless. Again, chasing down that ball, let's take a look. Look at that beautiful tweener, but just Look, not enough to win the point. It was a drop, too. He couldn't really put it away. It wasn't over, but couldn't get back. Oh. Yates is getting into Yates mode. You could see him there. He says, all right, I'm taking over the court on this one. Eight, seven, two. Yates going to try to jump across. It's our longest session so far. Longest point of the match. Ooh, gets the corner. Quick hands by Anson. So with a nice interchange, they're finding themselves two points away from game number one in this gold medal match. Uh, though they're serving, they're clarifying the right position and calling a timeout by Georgine, and we will take a Takea hydration break and see how this gold medal match unfolds. The Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships powered by Margaritaville are brought to you by Total Pickleball, your one-stop pickleball shop. Free two-day shipping on the widest selection of pickleball products by Franklin X40, the official ball of the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships by Gamma Pickleball, the official grip of the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, and by Yola for the champion in you. As you can see, people there having fun in the crowd, enjoying their time, uh, and enjoying the gameplay. Welsher and Yates conferring a bit. They did not call the timeout, but taking the moment for themselves as well. And as we head back to the court. Now there's Yates. It's interesting, the, the dynamic with Welsher and Yates is, Welsher knows her place. Because, you know, Kyle is aggressive. He wants to take over the court. I know I can cover, I can support. And, but Yates is more conservative in this match. He's showing a lot of respect, 
that he doesn't want to leave too soon. So the serve. Jarjim did a beautiful job defending the ATP. And then ultimately coming back, put away by Onsen Sen. Uh, interestingly, we're here at game point in game number one of this gold medal match. Onsen serving to Welsher. So with a score of an 11-7, we end game number one, but it is not over yet. Time and again, we've gone to three games here on championship court, and we'll see if Yates and Welsher have a chance to claim gold themselves. Margaritaville, it's not just a state of mind. Now it's a place to live. Introducing Latitude Margaritaville. New homes in 55 and better communities where you can live the Margaritaville lifestyle every day. Find your new home at LatitudeMargaritaville.com. So after game number one is in the books with a score of 11-7 favor to Jarjim, who's you're seeing there getting ready to serve with her partner, Chame Own Scenes. They're competing against Kyle Yates, Eva Welsher, all four of these players from South Florida. And I think clarify a little bit earlier, you were saying Welsher knows her place. We had a chance to talk to her actually on her way through the bracket and she's saying, you know, Kyle's doing what he's doing, you know, and if it's working, as long as it's working, I'm going to let him do that. Well, it's the classic saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, so not knows her place in a derogatory way, but in a strategic, intentional way. It'd be best to say knows her role in this match and in the tournament. They both have their strengths. See, there you go. In that sense, you know, how can they keep Kyle from going across? So I was going to say, when we have a moment in between points, what do you think they can do differently with the strategy there. I mean, right here it worked, but obviously compared to the match we saw earlier where they just blew through, you know, 11-7 is not totally lopsided, but obviously it hasn't been working. So does he need to give Welsher a little bit more? What I, what I found interesting, we'll talk about it after this point, that just didn't quite clear on the reset, is that Yates is more conservative in this match than he was in the previous one. Uh, he's He's gone to school. He knows how dangerous Sharjim is, and he's gone to school on, on scenes, it appears, as well. So... He's getting aggressive here, and that works. He cut across, but he's picking his spots a little bit more conservatively than, I, than we saw in the previous match. And here's a look with that strong backhand over his left shoulder. Owen Scenes serves to Yates, and uncharacteristic return going wide. You hate that to happen. It's like a free point right. or free, you know. Right. You, you kick serve. yourself and you go, oh, gosh. You're my job is to start the point. And out of the break, after the game, we've already seen just, we were just talking about Yates being a little more conservative. And it seems like he's ramped it up just a little bit now. They're trailing by a game here. Obviously, this is a must win game in the gold medal match. Welcher shaking her hands a little frustrated. 
She goes to eight serves. Welsher lets it go. Good eye. Welsher playing in front of her hometown fans here in Naples. And a little differently than game number one where they're trailing up to five. They're leading now 3-1. Good reset. Keeping Yates honest. Mm, my goodness. <laughs> Lays out on the court and still wouldn't quit. They were clapping. Hopefully that's just a, a bit of exhaustion and not injury. She's still down, though. Let's hope she's not hurting and her partner sits down next to her. Yes, uh, the, him sitting down next to her. Let's take a look here and see if she did kind of go down funny. Yeah, she seemed to oh, might have knocked the wind out of her just a little bit. She landed yeah. quite flat. But the, the reason, if you're just joining us, in a previous game we saw uh, her, her partner on scenes had uh, fallen down a couple of times in a row and sort of found himself laying there, and she laid down next to him in camaraderie. So... We're here back at it, as we can see, Simone Georgim, who is known to be a fierce competitor, battling an amazing defense as well as offense, about to receive a serve from Kyle Yates. Partners supporting each other in all ways. Welsher was there, stood her ground. Yates and Welsher stacking there. Yates will move over to the left side, keep forehand in the middle. Mm. You know, I mean, I, I don't know exactly how tall he is, um, but well over six feet. And if you're going to lob, you clearly, you know, that's really risky with such a short court, you know, and that height. It's got to be, uh, it's got to be a surprise and he's got to be leaning forward. And, you know, obviously you'd want to try that over Jardim, ideally. Well, scene serves at 1-5. Now watch Yates. Yates is starting to, to get much more active up there than he was in game one. Mm. Oh, she goes to Dink uh, into the net. She got her head down a little bit still. Two, five, one. The top female senior pro players. Yates moving all the way over in front of Welsher whenever possible. Ooh, a little pop off the net, handled. That's well played. Forcing second serve. These players Take a look have. here at the Skechers instant replay. Serve, so Yates returns, and now we're all four players up. Mm. Yates coming all the way across. Oh, well, sure, almost got confused there. Am I supposed to switch or not? Mm. Jarjim speeds it up. Went right at Welsher. I started to say that these players collectively have a wheelbarrow full of medals. Mm. And it's as if they haven't won anything here. They want this badly. Gold yeah. is on the line. 
and they want to add to their collection. Three, five, two. Well played. You know, it's hard. It, with, with all the back and forth right there, you have again, even though he got his paddle on it. Let's take a watch, look. Watch how the, see how she catches that ball at its highest point. Catch it at its highest point and drive it down. Jarjim is so oh, good with that. the speed up. Once again, Jarjim speeds it up against Welsher. She was up to the task, but Yates edging over in the middle opened up the angle. Yeah. Jarjim checking to make sure. Correct server in position. We're now tied up. Eats gets back. That is cat and mouse pickleball at its that best. That was a great point. That was a great point. There was so much activity going on away from the shot and trying to get in position for that attack. Despite some great coverage defense and resets, point goes away to... Jardim Onsens and uh, ref waiting for position. Recalls the score, 6-5-2. Welsh are there, almost just relaxed, didn't she? Yep, nice angle volley. What have I said all day? Placement over power is perfect. Didn't try to do too much with it. Here it is. And just punches it in the open court. Mm. Pops into the net. So we're tied up once again. 6-6. Six, six. for that lob. Beautiful lob. That's a beautiful lob. Kyle's looking up at the sky. You can see the sun on the side of his face. I think if he turned over his left shoulder, it was just high enough that the sun might have caught his eye. Still dangerous to hit a drive from that spot. <clears throat> Ball dribbles over the net. Yates gets it. Double net court. Yates moving all over like a cat. Well, sure, a little frustrated goes to kick the ball through. Yep. A timeout's been called, I believe. Yes, timeout has been called by Yates and Welshire. So after another Takea hydration break, We'll see if we can get more action. The Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, powered by Margaritaville, are brought to you by PaddleTech, the official paddle of the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, by Southern Tide, the premium coastal lifestyle brand, by Takeya, hydration is an all-day game, and by the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships. Save the date, April 13th to 20th, 2024. So as we come back, you're looking at the teams there have called the timeouts. Right now, the gold medal is on the line for Welsher and Yates. 
with Game Num have gone to Jarjim and Onzins. But they're fighting back and forth. And Yates has been a little bit more aggressive. How do you think they might be able to close this out and take us to three games? I think it, it's clear that Yates has made it up in his mind. He says, all right, it's time for me to take over. That's what he's been doing in the previous rounds. We saw it uh, on several of his matches, and he just jumps up from his chair, claps his hands, and goes, okay, come on. Now's the time. He is amped up. He's like a cat up there. It's going to be interesting to see how on scenes and Jarjean blunt this attack. There it is, right out of the timeout. Cut in front of Welsher, take the dink. Didn't ask, work that time. Yeah, and you say, you ask, all right, how do you blunt that? And it's exactly what Jarjim did. Went behind him, kind of caught him a little bit as he was trying to Seven, move to the six, middle. Two. Goes right at Walsher. You hear the crowd a little bit go, oh, he just won those shots. One of those body shots that we don't do when we play recreationally. <laughs> it would look, it would be frowned upon. So here we are at 8 6. Still a two point game, but you know, the higher you get, the less you like those two eight, points. Six, two. Jim holds her. So with a line. quick replay from Sketcher's pickleball. There it so is. It kind of goes down. And as Onsins get ready to serve, we're two points away from Nine, game six, number two, two and a possible gold medal. <laughs> Great <laughs> drop. Good hustle there. One of my favorite phrases is, hands as soft as a baby's butt. <laughs> And that was perfect. He turned the key on the backhand side, opened up the paddle face, just deadened the ball. In. That's a work of artistry. Giving them a chance to come back once again. is gold medal match pickleball. So in the middle of that point, I think Kai let out a yell, thought there was a foot fault. A little frustrated there. He sort of stopped actually, almost stopped a little bit. He yelled out and said, no, thought it was a fault. And ultimately then ref did not call it. Six, nine, two, aggressive serve. There's that long reach on own scenes. You leave that ball up just even a hair. Notice how these players make contact with the ball so far out of front of the body. Rare miss by Georgine. So we're going to 9-6-2. 9-6-2. Welsher Yates desperately need to hold them. Oh. 
We were talking about that in the open. Yeah. And that's the danger of if you're going to cut over that far and hit a poach, you, it better be a darn good one because otherwise that whole court is open. And here we are. Match point. They see that go, and the gold medal goes to Jarjim and Onsens with a hug to the opponents, some recognition. Silver will go to, there you see, Eva Welcher and Kyle Yates. A little bit of a high five, some hugs. Jardim and Yates known each other for quite a while here, both being, all four of these people being from South Florida, but in particular, Welcher, Jardim and Yates uh, nearby in Fort Myers and beautiful Naples. So ladies and gentlemen, we will be back with some gold medal celebration in just a moment. Margaritaville, it's not just a state of mind. Now, it's a place to live. Introducing Latitude Margaritaville. New homes in 55 and better communities where you can live the Margaritaville lifestyle every day. Find your new home at latitudemargaritaville.com. to be back here once again at a medal stand with some amazing competitors. I want to recognize Eva Welsher and Kyle Yates, silver medalists in this unique mixed split age. So you can see you guys are no strangers to this place. You're here on Championship Court in a unique place. And I'm going to have A-Game come on out and give you your medals. So A-Game is the official hydration here at the U.S. Open. Kyle, here's your silver medal. And you guys, you've been here before. It's a hard-fought battle. And you came through. You pounded your way through earlier. We saw some amazing stuff earlier in the day. This one quite didn't go to your way. But you have the settle, the silver. So what's going on now? Well, obviously, it's disappointing always to lose. And um, I just had a phenomenal legend next to me just doing so much work. But uh, to lose to Simone and um, Jaime is an honor to play them and an honor to lose to them. And uh, so anyways, it was a great day. And I really am just thankful that Kyle said yes to me. <laughs> I, I asked him. OK, well, you said yes. And here you are with another medal, so many medals from the US Open. Congratulations. And what are you thinking right now? Uh, I'm hungry. <laughs> no, it was a fun day. Uh, obviously, uh, the, the split age, you know, Sadie Hawkins of pickleball, or even asking to play, and uh, it's it's just fun. I mean, she's she's such a warrior, and uh, kept me kind of positive all day. Even you know, we had some long long matches, and uh, just a lot of fun. And you know, at least I'm glad Simone's playing really well, so I get to be on the same side of the court with her next uh, in the next few days. So I'm excited for that as well. Yeah. Well, congratulations once again, our silver medalists. 
And now we're gonna bring out our new US Open champions, Simone Jardim and Jaime Onsins. <laughs> and once again, bringing out your gold medalist. Thank you so much, A Game, for sponsoring the hydration with their electrolytes here. And Jaime, yours. And in addition to your prize winnings, you get a pair of Skechers pickleball shoes. I'm gonna fix that up there. And courtesy of Margaritaville, you get a two-night stay at the Margaritaville Beach Resort in Fort Myers Beach, Florida. Perfect. I there can you do go. That. A nice getaway. Wow. <laughs> so you guys. Tonight, can we go tonight? <laughs> Yeah, everybody's like, I'm tired, I need to rest. You got more gameplay coming. So you're here on championship court. You've been here multiple times. It's great to see you again. It's nice to see you here. And there's a little story. You were talking about how special this moment is for you. Can you tell us why? Well, growing up like a long, long, long time ago, I used to watch this guy uh, compete for Brazil, uh, Davis Cup. I actually made a trip like seven hours on a bus to watch him play. Uh, and uh, they were playing, I think, like, I remember it was Thomas Muster on the other oh, side. Sorry. It was in Florianopolis. No, I uh, was in Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo. Anyways, I just know I got on a bus and I went and I supported them. Uh, and for me, I grew up, you know, watching him. He was, people don't know, but he was 20-something uh, in the world in doubles and 30-something in the world, ATP. Okay, I'm talking about like tennis, legit legend right here. So for me, it was like no brainer. I want to play with my fellow Brazilian, and I'm so proud. You know, it's just like, I mean, what a battle. So right. So you both come from tennis, and you have a chance to play with a prior tennis icon, but not in tennis, in pickleball. And so here you are now in pickleball at the Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships Championship Court, playing with a fellow Brazilian. What does this moment mean? Well, I watch, when I grow up, I watch Simone playing pickleball. <laughs> and, uh, I think that's a, our best metal stand comment yet. <laughs> no, and I, I just love the opportunity to play with her. She's a legend and really nice uh, to be able to do that. I love to compete and great competitor on my, on my side. It's really an honor and I'm really happy to, to be able to do that this week. Well, it was entertaining, it was athletic. Thank you for some amazing pickleball. Sure, the tennis, but together, your guys' domination of pickleball today got you a gold. Thank you so much. Congratulations, everybody. And don't go away. We have more great pickleball action coming from Zing Zang Championship Court at the Minto US Open Pickleball Championships, powered by Margaritaville. Margaritaville, it's not just a state of mind. Now, it's a place to live. Introducing Latitude Margaritaville. New homes in 55 and better communities where you can live the Margaritaville lifestyle every day. Find your new home at latitudemargaritaville.com. As we come back here, getting ready to see a bronze medal match in this very unique bracket. That's looks like you got Hunter Johnson there getting ready to compete with his partner Beth Bellamy. We have Hunter Johnson here getting ready to go out and play. Hunter from New Braunfels, Texas. We saw he and his brother competing against gold the other day. He got a gold medal in singles pro earlier this week, his partner Beth Bellamy, who also is the uh, top, number one ranked actually, female senior pro currently. She herself has got some medals last year at the US Open, and they're set to be a strong team coming up against. On the other side, we have Paul Olin. Earlier in the week, if you've been watching, Paul got his first gold here at the US Open after getting multiple silvers and bronze and silvers. As you can see there, 19 silver, 21 bronze, 22 silver, and then 23.
he took a gold himself. Strong tennis background, and you see once again out here on the court, Megan Fudge. Megan a little bit newer to pickleball, coming with a strong tennis background herself, currently as a coach and a player. Uh, so she and Olin will be facing off. So they listed Bel Air for a little fun fact, just in case people always like to hear it. There's so many RVers in pickleball. They're now full-time RVers, full-time pickleball. And the whole family has gotten into it as well. So, as we get ready, Beth Bellamy on the far court looks to serve. This is Rusty from Pickleball Channel. I'm joined with Tim Buick in the booth. Get ready to play. Two nice strong hits from Fudge there. A former Big Ten tennis player at the University of Illinois, and you could see the power strokes on that shot. Bellamy answers with a sharp angle winner. Two impressive shots to start this bronze medal match. So as we're at 0, zero 1 Bellamy serves to Olin. And work their way up to the net. Second server. Olin with the overhead. Transiting the second server. Again, all four players here with a strong tennis background. As Transition to pickleball quite well. As you see developing a diversity of shots, which I'm sure we'll see come into play beyond what is typical with tennis. a nice control put away volley by Bellamy. I like watching Fudge and Olin play. I, it's like watching fire and ice. Hmm. She plays with a lot of passion. Olin is kind of chill. There you go. Hunter Johnson with the roll backhand winner. He's the youngest player on the court. Take a look at the Skechers Pickleball instant replay. And the 28, yeah, 28 year old puts that one away. A lot of early winners in this match. Bagels for a while here. Trying to score the first point. Zero, zero, one. Bill, let me serves. Owen digs it out. Exchange, fast hands. Zero, zero, two. And finally, get a point on the board. No more bagels <laughs> for Fudge and Olin. I guess that's kind of a food thing. We've got fudge. I'm talking about bagels right at dinner time. This right, is probably not a good thing to do. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> More dad jokes than me. <laughs> Zero, zero, 
heats up at fudge there, and the ball goes wide. The did side out. Did you just say heats up the fudge? You just you were just talking to me. Wait a second here. Now you got me hungry again. Bellamy serves. Fudge returns. It was nice. She she got down there low to kind of come cross court, but ultimately Olin looked to attack into the net though. Yeah, Johnson sped that up on a tough ball that was really low. Struck it well. Serving two one one. going right at Fudge. Not seen a lot of patience early from either team. Yeah. They've had a long day of, of playing now into the bronze medal match. And both teams are aggressive as Fudge hits the winning shot there. Johnson checks his position with the ref, serves to Fudge. Side up. Olin managed to get that backhand from his left shoulder down. One, three, one. Forcing a side out. was a good controlled attack volley. There's a look. Not trying to do too much with it, just going to the open spot. One, three, two. Tendency is to overhit in situations like that. Johnson comes across. Well, there it is. Owen left it up just a touch. Yeah, Bellamy steps outside the court a little bit in the corner. Let's take a look at the Skechers instant replay. Here she goes. Kind of her own hybrid Ernie there. Checks right. her feet. Goes her way. And Straddling the corner of the kitchen. Second server. Tried for a little too much there, but an attackable ball there. That's the right decision. She just pulled it a little bit. Right, so we go to second server now. Three, one, two. Nice little interchange there, ultimately resulting in a side out. And we're still hanging here on 1 3. Second server. Fudge tried to jump across, couldn't quite get to it, and locked up her partner there. Points are a premium here early. It is difficult to put points on the board. And it's another side out. Johnson looked to move forward after multiple back and forth, holding it 3-1. It's interesting. Johnson likes playing over on the left side, so he has the forehand in the middle. 
but yet Fudge plays on the left side. So she has the forehand in the middle. Server. Here. That might have been the longest point of the match thus far. Take a look. Sketchers pick a ball instant replay as Johnson puts it away with a big yell. I'll take that net cord. Sure fun to hit it, but it's not good being on the other side of that. Now that ball went off the line and skidded. Right. Just kind of took off, almost like it's going on wet grass. It takes that little extra skid. You can't get under it enough. See if they can get off of a score of one. Yeah. Bellamy's almost straddling the corner there the whole time. Yes. That little extra reach. Obviously, Hunter Johnson. A clarifying server, clarifying position. Johnson serves to fudge. That mm. attacking volley, stealing real estate. That's what she's doing, moving in. Took that advantage, the ball floated a little bit. I'm coming in and I'm drilling it. Right, and we have our first timeout in game number one of the mixed pro split age bronze medal with a Takea hydration break. The Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, powered by Margaritaville, are brought to you by Latitude Margaritaville and Minto. Change your latitude to the active adult paradise of Latitude Margaritaville. By Naples, Marco Island, and the Everglades, Florida's paradise coast. By Skechers Pickleball. Experience performance comfort on the court with the all-new Skechers Viper Court Pro. And by Margaritaville Hotels and Resorts. Check in and chill out at margaritavilleresorts.com. So as we come back, we see Johnson and Bellamy there getting ready. Heading towards in the background, you see the palm trees and the tabletops of the Margaritaville License to Chill Lounge. The temperature and the conditions have got better and better here at beautiful East Naples Community Park. Johnson serves to Olin. So with a quick point. Me. Yeah, about Bellamy is just the control. It's so easy to overhit a ball like that. And she just, nice little soft top spin into the corner. She hits her spots so well, she doesn't try for too much. Oh, and heats it up to Johnson. Can't quite get it back. Bellamy serves. I heard Johnson say, I'm there. I know, I, I say that so many times when I'm playing. I'm there, how do I miss that shot? He played it perfectly, he was right there. Just didn't finish it. Ball 
goes long with a fist pump by Fudge. And a high five there to Owen. They finally get off of one. See if they can gain some momentum. Yeah. Nice deep volley. Sometimes the best shot you can hit is the one no one remembers. And Hunter Johnson there just hit a nice deep volley into the transition zone. Hmm. Oh, I think getting frustrated. Yeah, I'd like to have that one back. Owen trying to add to his gold medal that he earned yesterday in the men's pro singles. Trying to get a bronze here, but they're trailing early. That one goes a bit long. Putting another point on the side of Bellamy Johnson. Now three points away from game number one. So yeah, close, yeah. It was just wide. Jumped was, and reached it. We won't quite be able to see it from this angle. Yeah, that was a that was a beautiful lob. That was a good spot to do it too. Seemed to be favoring Olin. Hmm. There you go. As you're talking about that energy, Fudge bouncing back and forth on her feet, yeah. saying, come on. Yeah, trying to pump up her partner here, saying, we're not out of this yet. We've got the serve, one point at a time. A little high. Uh-oh. Yeah, comes around. Well, with that athleticism, the ability to clearly jump across. As the youngest player on the court, the 28-year-old. But the height, I mean, he's in great shape the, in mm -hmm. the, you know, with a long sports history. Is it? Yeah, well placed there. Nine, two, one. two points away. Mm. She hit the hard shot, and the one that was a little bit easier is the one she missed, and that's why she's slapping her so side there. Game point. Second serve. Fortunately, unforced error into two. the net. 10 2 2. Fudge looks to let it go long, but it lands in. So that closes out game number one as Bellamy Johnson take a pretty powerful closeout at 11-2. We'll be back for game number two from the Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships powered by Margaritaville in just a bit. Margaritaville, it's not just a state of mind. Now, it's a place to live. Introducing Latitude Margaritaville. New homes in 55 and better communities where you can live the Margaritaville lifestyle every day. Find your new home at LatitudeMargaritaville.com. All right, as we see Beth Bellamy getting ready at the beginning of game number two. As our camera's getting off the court there as they get started. Special angle. Bellamy and Johnson quickly took game one. Well, there's a lot of back and forth, I should say. Side 
But unfortunately, even with all that back and forth, because you only score when you're serving, the result ended up being 11-2. But it was much closer than the score would indicate as they were stalled in those lower numbers for a long period of time and then went on a bit of a run. So possibility right now for them to go two games straight. And we've seen it before time and time again. Certainly Fudge and Olin can turn the tables. A little bit of attack closer up to his head there, a little bit. A little too much on his left side. He's like, oh gosh, I was there. Zero, zero, one. Nice deep return. Now they'll steal some real estate and move in. Uh, can't quite get it over the net there. to attack, sails a bit long. And I've said it all afternoon, but we know, those of us who play, how hard it is to lay off those. And Bellamy just has such a good eye. She's let several of those go in this match already. Speaking of that, <laughs> right Johnson on. drives down the line. Right on cue. <laughs> and goes a little bit long. It's, you know, but uh, again, at this level, Everything's margin fair, less and less and less. So they're they're hitting the ball deep on purpose. They're hitting the ball at more difficult angles. And they do make it look easy, don't they? But uh, Bellamy tries to do a little bit of lob and actually barely gets up there. You'll see the sketches pick a ball replay. Almost the perfect shot, the one you say thank you. I was just gonna say, yeah, you could keep doing that if you'd like. That's the one I want. Right here. When I watch Johnson and Bellamy play, I, I think of the term controlled aggression. Mm, that's a good way to put it. See, like right there, they're not trying for too much. It, it makes me think of this little lady that I teach, and I said, this is a game of controlled aggression. And she says, honey, I have aggression, but I have no control. <laughs> She's so much fun, but they're under control, and that's why they're winning. When Bellamy serves. So somewhat similar to game number one, we find ourselves going back and forth with no points on the board. Do I need to go into the double donut thing, double bagel? No. That's okay. I'll be all right with it. Yeah, I kind of wore that out, haven't I? <laughs> well, thank you for being here, Tim. Uh, appreciate you being a part of the day. As we are in the bronze medal match, the mixed pro split age. See, Rusty, I, th I think I want to move to Margaritaville. Or at least have one. Well, there you go. Latitude Margaritaville over there is a location. You're 50 plus. You could move there. Zero, zero, two. So it's legal, huh? Yeah, there we as, go. As Fudge serves to Johnson. I don't have to tell too much of how much that plus is, do I? We can just keep it at 50 plus, right? That's all right. It doesn't matter. That works for me. One, zero, two. So Fudge. Serving to Bellamy. Thank you to all those people watching online, supporting this unique mixed pro split age bracket. There's a lot more great stuff to come all week long. Well, and nice you, interchange, but go ahead. Yeah, you talk about the uniqueness of it. There's a 31-year difference between Bellamy and Johnson. And it very equal in ability and, and what they can do on the court. 
nice put away volley there. Yeah. Again, one of the many attractions to pickleball. Mm -hmm. Here's a little bit of that instant replay, comes up. A little help from the net court, putting that up high enough to make it nice and easy for Fudge. And they get the ball back. And we're almost a carbon copy of game number one where Fudge Olin put one point on the board after multiple back and forth with no points. All right, points at a premium early. Time Fudge decided to get aggressive with the poach. Didn't pay off though. Shout out to some of the manufacturers, both Fudge and Olin are with Team Gamma. Gamma, the official grip of the U.S. Open, have been here for several oh, years. Oh, oh, Paul just got a bit off balance there. I think he had knew he had one foot into the non-volley zone, couldn't hit it, so I had to let it go either. Right, Fudge is over there trying to encourage him. Right, she's the fire, he's the ice. And so come on, she comes over and says, come on, come on, we got this. It's the forehand roll. If you can come from underneath the ball and roll it, get that top spin, flick that wrist, it gets the spin on the ball, brings it down inside the baseline. Well played. Yeah, saw that coming. She's like, come on. Saying that's how it's done. The crowd, come on. crowd's liking it. We still have people here in the stands enjoying themselves. And a beautiful Florida evening here. I love the energy from the 36-year-old. That's a nice drive there by Johnson. Caught Olin a little bit off guard. Wasn't expecting that. Get by Johnson. So with a nice put away by Fudge, they force that side out. She has a strong overhead. You've got to hit that lob perfect because she can she can get up. She can cover some territory. Yeah, that was nice. And if you watch him, he has a, when he does that over his left shoulder, let's take a look if they got it. That's the final put away with the forehand of the right, but his backhand over the left, he offering, he's taking air. He's jumping up in the air even yeah. as he hits it. Now it looks like we have a new ball coming in. They're just checking the ball. Make sure it's in round. Tosses it back to. Make sure there's no wobble effect. Nice poach there by Johnson. He's looking for that one. Took it at its highest point. That's what I need. I need a referee that can keep me on track with a serve because I always screw it up. Mm -hmm. There's Olin again. He's looking off into the uh, into the sky, thinking what just happened. So all, all four are stacking. 
you know, a lot of people say, oh, there's only one reason. Obviously, every team does. But basically, the principle after this point, for those who are somewhat new, All right, you, you stack so you can get behind the side to play to your strength. So you decide, all right, who do you want to have? If it's two right-handers, say, all right, do you want left side? Is, do I want that forehand down the middle? Change there. That was one of our longer points. So, is there, you have this sort of back and forth, back and forth, and what kind of opening are they looking for? Well, when that interchange is happening. Yeah, they're trying to separate the players so you get a little bit of a gap. You try to hit that dink effective enough so the ball is popped up slightly. Now they're looking, keeping him back, trying to reach. Olin's trying to reset. Now he's worked his way up to the net. Just be looking and say, what's the shot that you can hit? When finally they get off of, worked very hard, and now they got two points on the board. It's only a three-point game, a lot of back and forth for a score this low. We'll see if they can make a run. Yeah, they've been in it a while now. Yeah. Oh, man. So yeah. pop up on the net, almost made it over. Ended up staying on their side. And once again, it looks like Olin's taking a quick hydration break. It is legal especially in Florida with all the sweat, to take a, as long as you go direct, grab the drink, and come back, similar to when they grab a towel to dry their hands or dry the handle. Um, got the net cord. I started to say that you know, when you're talking about what are they looking for in that exchange, you say, what's the shot I can hit that'll make my opponent most uncomfortable? And then hopefully to try to start creating some mm -hmm. chaos, there's a... Fudge tries to go just straight down the line, doesn't quite work. So they decide to call a timeout with a score of 7-2 in the middle of the bronze medal match with one final look. As you see that pass through, we're gonna take a Takeya hydration break and special thanks to our sponsors. The Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, powered by Margaritaville, are brought to you by Latitude Margaritaville and Minto. Change your latitude to the active adult paradise of Latitude Margaritaville. By Naples, Marco Island, and the Everglades, Florida's paradise coast. By Skechers Pickleball. Experience performance comfort on the court with the all-new Skechers Viper Court Pro and by Margaritaville Hotels and Resorts. Check in and chill out at margaritavilleresorts.com. So as we're back there with a look at Megan Fudge during that timeout, they've been able to go back and forth, 0-1, 0-1, and for quite a while, not many points on the board, and all of a sudden find themselves at a deficit of 6-2 with Bellamy and Johnson leading. We'll see if there was any change to their strategy or we're gonna see some differences here. Looks like the crowd's even giving them a bit of an encouraging applause as Hunter Johnson serves at a score of 7-2-1. Johnson tried to attack the low ball there, which is really difficult to do. There's that high ball we were just talking about. What are they looking for? Yep. That's what they're looking for. Megan Look at this catch it pickleball away. instant replay. There it is. Both feet off the ground, puts it away. And then we see Olin serving. Second 
Mm. That's, uh, you know, I don't know, I guess, you know, you, you, I, I feel bad saying it because of how much better they are than I as a player, but you, you, you got to get it over the net, right? Yeah, you've got to. I like to say, you know, when the wheels are coming off the bus and things aren't going my way or my team's way, I just said, let's make them earn it. Let's not give it to them. Let's make it earn it. And a lot of times I just think I just need to make them hit one more. Just make them hit one more. Again, easier said than done, especially if you're being pressured, especially at this high level. A little bit of miscommunication yeah. there. Was Olin had it, the angle was to fudge, but I think she thought Olin might have been coming across to get it. Let's take a look. Yeah. And yeah. I'm wondering if uh, Olin is feeling a little bit of fatigue. And the reason I say that, he went all the way to gold, won the gold yesterday. It's been a long day today. And the early matches, they had to battle quite a wind, which can be fatiguing as well. Hmm. Well, at 7 3, Bellamy serves to Olin. And that's why I think we're. Uh, he's, a, again, one of the top senior pro men in, in pickleball. And so I'm a little surprised at some of those little mishits like that. Yeah, that's why I was wondering if the fatigue factor. He's coming in. He's played a lot of pickleball. In he's less. fantastic. He's a fantastic player. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And he's Fudge played a lot turn. in 48 hours. Yeah. There we go. A little pop off the net. Point. Well, that is a fine point. Yeah. It's well played. And so we find ourselves two points away. The possibility for Bellamy Johnson to claim a bronze medal here. Bellamy serves. Nice angle. Johnson gets it. Oh, yeah, nice. yeah. yeah, and outstanding. They stayed in the point. Just stay in the point. And they played that beautifully defensively and then again make them hit one more. So a little clarification, we were at 9-3 a little earlier. Now we're at 10-3, and we got a Takea hydration break, and we'll see how this closes out. The Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, powered by Margaritaville, are brought to you by Total Pickleball, your one-stop pickleball shop. Free two-day shipping on the widest selection of pickleball products. By Franklin X40 the official ball of the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships by Gamma Pickleball, the official grip of the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, and by Yola for the champion in you. So as we come back, we take a look at Olin and Fudge. You can see his hands up a little frustration. They've been playing great all day long. Obviously, they had to fight their way through the back draw as well to find themselves here on championship court once again. Uh, trying to claim bronze. And currently, they're one game down. And now, you know, uh, the other day, Eva Welsher was here. She said, we were down 9-3, we came back. I have seen it in pickleball more than once. It is possible, but they got a lot of work to do. Game and match point. Ah, uh, and it just dribbles the net. And so that bronze medal is going to go to Bellamy and Johnson with Olin and Fudge recognizing their competitors. A hug and a raise of the paddles. We'll be back as trying to get the crowd going on and pointing to his partner. We'll be back with a middle stand in just a moment. Let's take a look at this. Wasted away again, Margarita. 
Margaritaville, it's not just a state of mind. Now, it's a place to live. Introducing Latitude Margaritaville. New homes in 55 and better communities where you can live the Margaritaville lifestyle every day. Find your new home at LatitudeMargaritaville.com. I'm here with our bronze medalists, Beth Bellamy and Hunter Johnson. Congratulations, mixed pro split age. Those of you, give them a round of applause here. We have Terry, one of the founders of the US Open Pickleball Championships, coming out with your medal. And real quick, you guys, so it's been a long day. It's an evening, a little bit better weather and temperatures than earlier, but still that you're outside there, you come back in here, you fight, you have some great competition. What's it mean for you once again to be getting a medal at the US Open? Well, it was just a really long day and we had a tough one in the quarterfinals against that team. Yep. They played amazing and um, we fought some really tough battles in the consolation to get back to the bronze medal match. So I felt really proud of us that we were able to rebound and, and fight through and get the bronze. Yeah, and so for you, being here again, again, this is a newer experience for you. You have a, the experienced partner. What's it mean to be playing with her in this unique bracket? And what do you think made the difference for you guys to close it out and finally get the medal? Yeah, you know, Bethy, we've known each other. She's like our second mom, you know. We've known each other forever. Shout out to the Bellamy boys and, and you know, Steve, I guess, you know, her <laughs> husband. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. I mean. That was for Steve. That, that was from Steve. Uh, yeah, just, just just playing with Beth is amazing. This is our first time together, so to get a medal is awesome. We had a heartbreaker in the main, but it was fun to fight back and, and get the bronze. It's awesome. Yeah, and so what do you think helped you guys kind of fight back and close that out? I think we're both just tough competitors. You know, we were disappointed when we lost, but we're going to go back and battle for every match. So, And it was just so much fun. Hunter played amazing the whole day. I just tried to set him up, and he just flew around the court and hit winners. So it was, it was awesome. Well, thank you for being here, and congratulations on your medals. Thank well you. done. Thank, thank you. you. our day here again at the Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships powered by Margaritaville. Come back tomorrow and see some amazing men's senior pro action.